As deep concrete includes the design of continuous concrete beams subject to bending, shear and torsion, it's based on ACI 318 and also CSA A23.3. But how do you actually enter the information into the program? How do you check the results? How do you optimize the design? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design completely from scratch a step-by-step -step continuous concrete beam example subject to bending, shear, and torsion using as deep concrete. Let's get started. As an example, design the flexural, shear, and torsion reinforcement for an edge continuous beam of 30 feet span. The joist system that is framing into the edge beam produces a uniform torsional load along the length of the beam. The beam is part of the second floor of a multi-story building. The clear span of the joist system is 40 feet, so the tributary area of the spandrel beam is 20 feet, one half of the span. The column size is 28 by 30, and we'll use F'C of 4 KSI and FY60. Dead load is 121 PSF, and live load is 100 PSF. The joist floor system produces a bending moment at the edge of the spandrel beam, 20.2, and also a shear 6.1 kip per foot. So this bending moment and this shear force produce a torsional moment at the beam. The calculation is shown here. So this is a uniform torsional moment at the center line of the beam. And we can calculate the eccentricity of this force to produce this moment, just dividing the moment over the shear. The eccentricity is 4.5 feet. With this information, we can model this spandrel beam into acid concrete. Let's go there. When you open as deep concrete, you see the project manager where you can see the modules included in the package, concrete columns, concrete beams, concrete or masonry bearing walls, one way slabs and concrete shear walls. In this case, we're going to use the concrete beam module. So let's create a calculation. Let's name it example. Add it to the tree. And the calculation has been added here. Just double click. And this is a template of a concrete beam in as deep concrete. In this case, we're going to model a spandrel beam. So let's specify this section. Now let's enter the dimension that we're given in the statement of the problem. This is 28.5 inches. The width is 30 inches. The flange thickness is 4.5 inches and then the flange width is equal to six times the thickness, which is 27 inches. Since this beam is part of a multi-story building, it's a continuous beam with multiple spans, it's good enough if we just model three spans of this long beam, and then we specify that the end supports of this beam are uh, fixed. So for three spans, we need four supports, 30 feet each. Graphically, we can see the beam here. In this case, we want to specify that the end support is fixed and also the other end support is fixed. So with this configuration, we are modeling a long continuous beam with all equal spans. So this model will match uh, the actual behavior of the beam. The materials specify F'C4, FY60. We go to the loads tab. Here we're going to enter the information given in the statement of the problem. We know that the dead load is 121 PSF and live load is 100 PSF. The tributary width is one half of the span of the joist system. The span is 40 feet, so one half is 20 feet. And this will be applied in the full span of 30 feet, so from 0 to 30. In the statement of the problem, we also calculated the eccentricity of this load with respect to the center line of the beam as 4.5 feet, which is 54 inches. And in order to consider the torsion, we need to check this box, which means that the load shown here will be multiplied times its eccentricity to produce the torsional moment. In addition, since this structure is a multi-story building, this is an indeterminate structure, so the torsional moments can be redistributed to the other parts of the structure. In that case, we check this box 
that says that torsion may be reduced. And in that case, the program will use the minimum of TU, the factor torsional moment, or phi TCR, which is the cracking torsional moment. Finally, we will copy these loads to the other uh, segments of the beam, and all three spans are being loaded with the same type of loads. Up to here, we have entered all the information given in the statement of the problem. We haven't designed the beam yet. In order to do that, we go to Reinforcement tab. Here, there are multiple controls to enter the number of rebars, the size of rebars, and the length of the rebars for the top bars, for the bottom bars, for the side bars, and for the stirrups as well. The program can show the capacity of the beam in shear, clicking here, show VBN, and also the capacity of the beam in bending, show VMN. Of course, this hasn't been designed yet, so it's failing in every span. We could change here the rebars and the sizes as necessary to make it work. However, as the concrete has another feature, which is the design manager, if we click on this button here, the program can design the beam for you. For example, here we specify the rebars sizes that we prefer in this design. For example, here we don't specify number nine rebars for this example. This is a large beam. And also number four for the stirrups. With this information, which is our preference on the rebar size, click on design and the program will attempt to design the rebars for this for this beam. Design. And this is a design by the program for the load combination 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. As you can see, all the red areas representing the shear diagram is inside the blue and the green areas. Blue is VS, the contribution of the steel, and green is VC, the contribution of the concrete. The same applies for the uh, bending moment. The red indicates the bending moment along the beam. The blue is the capacity, phi MN, according to the rebars designed by the program. Everything is inside the capacity envelope, so the design is OK. Numerically, if we go to the at a glance tab, this shows a summary of the results, where you can see immediately if something is failing somewhere. In this case, everything is passing. The program checks bending, checks shear, all the ratios are OK and also in torsion. Also some reinforcement ratios, everything is passing, and the deflections are OK as well. If we go to the Condensed tab, this is some, a more detailed set of calculations, the support reactions. This is the bending moments along the beam in every span, and this is the bending strength calculated according to the rebars specified. Here is the shear forces in every span, and then the shear strength, everything is passing as well. So is the torsion area, torsional moments along the beam, and the torsion strength, everything is passing. Finally, the, the deflections. If we go to the detail tab, it's a more detailed set of calculations, step by step, generated completely from scratch, with exposed formulas and also with references to the ACI code for positive bending, for negative bending. This is the shear design area all the calculations shown there. The program also checks the interaction between torsion and shear and bending. The stirrups necessary for torsion are added to the stirrups required for shear, and also the longitudinal reinforcement required for torsion is added to the reinforcement required for, for bending. Graphically, here the program shows uh, the shear and moment diagrams with the structural capacity for comparison purposes. Finally, the construction tab shows uh, graphically an elevation of the beam, showing the rebars and also the stirrups that were just designed. As you can see, it's very easy to design a continuous beam for bending, shear, and torsion using as deep concrete. And the program can save you a lot of time and effort. If you like the software, please visit the website www.azipsoft.com. Please subscribe if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.